So probably the most truthful statement about uh, what makes a good survival knife is the knife that you have on you. But of course, with that statement, how are you supposed to know what properly, you know, what's a good survival knife to have on you in a survival situation if you don't have some kind of baseline or some kind of qualifications for a survival knife? So that's what we're going to be going over primarily today. The first and probably most important piece about a survival knife or a good part about a good survival knife is that it needs to be strong. And what I mean by this is it needs to be robust. It needs to be able to take a beating because in a survival situation, one of the biggest things that's overlooked and a lot of people don't test for anymore. Like a lot of people, they don't baton knives. They don't really hard test knives anymore because they don't really want to break them or they don't see it as proper. But when in a survival situation, you really never know what exactly you'll have to do. You know, I never hope to have to baton the Spyderco Paramilitary 2, but I understand it. I know and have experience batoning it in its locked position. I know it's strong enough to do it. So while I don't want to necessarily do that with this paramilitary too, I know it's strong enough to take it. And I think that's a very important part that's often overlooked is, you know, just because you don't want to do something in a survival situation, you don't necessarily get the option of having a want to do it. If you have to baton a piece of wood to split it down, break it down to make fire uh, kindling for your fire, you have to do that. You don't really have an option in a survival situation because your only other option is death. So you have to make sure that your knife is strong. And if you notice a reoccurring theme across these three knives on the table, they're all pretty thick and they're all definitely strong. And regardless to this being a folder and these two being fixed blades, they're all strong knives. And so that is the first and most important part about a good survival and knife. pretty important part is ergonomics. I think this is something that's often overlooked as well, but you need to have a knife that's quite comfortable to hold because once again, in a survival situation, you don't know how long you're going to be in that situation. So that could be a week, it could be two weeks, it could be three weeks, but overall you don't want a knife that has weird protrusions that hurt your hand to hold it. All of these knives, once again, you'll notice this reoccurring theme, all of these knives have very very good ergonomics and so even in this kind of Tahoma field knife where it's a little bit big and it's a little bit weird you'll still find that it's a very ergonomically comfortable knife to hold and use for weeks upon end. It goes into the first part and that is quality. Overall you want a good quality knife. A knife that you know it's not going to fail you. Once again quality goes into the fact that you know that this knife, this knife, and this knife are all going to be high heat treats. You know they're not going to have bad steel that's going to roll. You know that they're not going to be overly hardened and snap on you. You know that their quality level is very good and I think this is something that a lot of people don't put enough pressure upon because remember these these are the knives that potentially your entire life is based on the performance of your survival knife. So, you know, go the extra mile, go the extra bang for your buck and get a, you know, $150, $200, $300 knife because when your life comes down to it and you have a $5 knife, that's essentially how much you think your life is worth. $5. Whereas, you know, if you have $300 knives, I'm not going to necessarily say that, you know, if you get a thousand dollar knife, it's just going to work for you, but you know, finding a good quality knife and then not being afraid to put the money down on it, you know, because that is a knife that your life will depend and on. And really this ties back into quality is steel. You want to make sure that your knife has a good steel because for whatever reason, you know, once again, in a survival situation, you don't know what's going to be happening, but having a low quality steel or a steel that dulls easily is very dangerous because you don't know the next time you'll be able to sharpen your knife. That's something that I kind of like about the Tahoma Field Knife is not only does it have a good quality steel to it, but it also has this backup edge on it so that, you know, should your primary edge go bad or, you know, dull over a course of time, you still have this backup edge on it. And I really do like that kind of thinking. But but once again, even if you don't have a backup edge on it, keep in mind that you want to try and invest, put the money forward to get a good steal. Because once again, this goes back to how much do you think your life is worth? Do you think it's worth $5, $10, or do you think it's $300 or, you know, 
400 whatever that you know cost of your knife ends up being part and this is absolutely the most important part in my mind is practice 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 with these knives too often i see people buy survival and bushcraft knives and they just throw them in their backpack and just forget about it you know be like you know i'll pull it out in a survival situation if i need to when it happens and that's not necessarily a horrible mindset but a lot like uh guns that we carry for self-defense what do we do with those guns we get out we practice not only to make sure that that knife or that gun is quality but also to make sure that we know how to use that gun should the situation arise because once again a, a gunfight situation is a lot like a survival situation for most of us it'll likely never happen but to the select few of us that it does really happen you need to make sure that you understand and know how to properly use your gun and or your survival knife so this is something that I see most people overlook and it completely boggles my mind that you would get a survival knife and just throw it in a backpack and forget about it, you know. Even if you do carry it on you every day and it's totally ready for your survival situation, it just it makes no sense to me why you wouldn't be going out there making sure, practicing with your knife, any of these knives, making sure that it is up to par and most of all, understanding how you use it. And that's especially important when you go over to smaller knives like this because this knife is very capable but you have to understand how to make it capable you know it's not inherently obvious like this knife here this is just a tank you know it's pretty inherently obvious how to use this and that it can take down pretty much anything you'll ever come up on but with this knife this knife can do many of the things this knife can but once again you have to have the skills the knowledge and most importantly the practice on how to use this knife and make it as effective as the tfk so that is the, the overlying point that I would really say regardless to if you're carrying some gigantic chopper like the Tahoma field knife or if you're carrying a mid-range knife like this pole force prepper one or if you're even small like this paramilitary two or even heck Amora Eldris you know I'm not going to recommend Amora Eldris for survival because it's really not that great for a survival situation but you'd be very amazed at what people can do with this Mora Eldris and things like the SE Zula you know with the practice with the skill because these people actually got out into the woods it actually used these knives you know the Mora Eldris and the S.E. Azula they understand how to use a tiny blade for a lot of survival tasks and you'll actually be surprised how capable they can potentially be once again I'm not going to say that this is the knife you need to choose for survival that has to be a personal choice of your own but keep these factors in mind and ultimately these are the biggest uh, reasons or the biggest things that I can help uh, reasons I can recommend and hopefully help you guys to narrow down your survival knife choice now of course once again it all does go back to the fact that the knife that you have on you in a survival situation is your survival knife so once again incorporating a knife I'm not gonna say that this TFK is likely gonna be on me in a survival situation it'd be great but it probably won't be at all reality especially if I'm you know just driving out to a place and I get in a car accident or you know I go off the side of the road and now I've and it, now I'm in a survival situation. This is probably the type of knife, and this probably, most especially, is going to be on me. And so I have to get out and practice with these types of knives to make sure that I understand how to use them for survival tasks. So anyways, guys, that's ultimately what I have to say about survival knives and how what, the types of knives you should choose and most importantly, the type of way you should address your survival knives. Like I said, if nothing else, if you end up still, you know, getting this Mora Eldris for your survival knife, do not just throw it in a backpack. Please get out there, use the knife, understand how it works. This will also teach you how long you have for edge retention. This is something that I really like to do, is just take a stock knife out there and use it until it's pretty dull. Not like completely dull, but you know, until it's pretty dull. This will teach you how long you have, how many days, how much work you can do with that knife before it's shot and so this is something that's also pretty important and once again if you do end up going with a knife that has something like 420 high carbon for the steel that's not necessarily the end of the world just make sure that you have attached to that knife's sheath a sharpening system that is capable and effective 
for sharpening it. Now I do like to not recommend that just for the fact that ultimately I like the knife to be a standalone unit because worst case scenario, let's just say, you know, you fall down and you know, you lose the sheath or whatever happens, you know, cause life is life. You end up losing the sheath and all you have is the knife. Well, you may have had a $400 sharpener on that tops to home a field knife sheath, but now that sheath is gone or that sharpener is gone. So now you're just down to the knife. And I think that's something that a lot of people don't think about. Anyways, guys, these are just some of the things that I commonly don't see talked about in survival knife videos. And hopefully this has been able to kind of show you guys some new elements and new ways to think about looking at how to get or getting a survival knife and what to get. Anyways, that's it for now. Don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, and I'm out.